starting in 5 seconds I feel it a great honor to inaugurate this memorable session of the World Forestry Congress for the first time it is meeting outside Europe in an eastern country the importance of the occasion is heightened by the fact that it is combined with the first session of the World Tropical Forestry Congress it is fitting that the first of what i hope may be a regular series of tropical forestry congresses should be held in india which has been working in this difficult field of forestry for close on a century i am therefore happy that the offer of the government of india to undertake responsibility for holding the fourth world forestry congress was accepted by the food and agriculture organization that organization has extended its full cooperation in the difficult task of organizing the congress for which we are deeply grateful i believe we have here today as representative gathering of world foresters and technicians connected with wood based industries as has ever assembled in any place before delegates from 51 countries and representatives of a number of organizations such as the food and agriculture organization unesco and ilo are present at this inaugural session it is a matter of gratification that even countries which are not members of a fao have considered the congress important enough to send strong delegations to participate in its discussions in the name of india i extend to all the members of the congress a most cordial welcome many of them have taken part in the excursions which were organized in the different parts of the country i hope they have been able to see something of our forestry activities and of the art and culture of this ancient land it is appropriate i think that the congress meets at dehradun which is universally recognized as the headquarters of indian forestry the forest research institute in whose convocation hall we are assembled today is one of the oldest institutions of research and education in the country dating back as it does to 1878 when it started as a modest school for training forest rangers during the three quarters of a century of its existence it has played a leading part in the development of indian forestry i believe its forest work is not unknown in international forestry circles for the betterment of a forestry infrastructure i observe that the congress has a comprehensive agenda before it and i note with satisfaction that tropical forestry figures prominently in it the discussions will no doubt be of a technical nature but if the recommendations which emerge from the discussions are to be fruitful they must inevitably take note of administrative budgetary and social contribution forestry is not an and in itself as an aspect of land utilization its value and significance are exactly in proportion to the sustained contribution it makes it to human welfare tangibly 
and directly through the produce that comes out of the forest and subtly and indirectly by protecting the soil and conditioning the climate thereby sustaining the physical basis of life forest also provide a great refuge and a home for wildlife in the end they have a great recreational and aesthetic value in india the forest are closely bound up with our religious and spiritual heritage whatever function the forest perform the touchstone and measure of their value should be human satisfaction wood is essential for human life as fuel as a versatile structural material and as raw material of many products which are indispensable to modern life forests are efficient agents for soil conservation for flood control and for stream flow maintenance in principle it should not be difficult for any country to work out the proportion that forest should occupy in its territory and the manner in which they should be distributed so that they may yield in full their productive and protective values but hardly in any country would it be possible to secure a logically desirable and theoretically correct allocation of land to agriculture pasture and forestry because one is not planning on a clean slate so to say in an ancient country like india the pressure of the human and cattle population on the soil makes the problem of obtaining sufficient land under forest one of peculiar difficulty an approach to the target fixed can often be made by afforesting waste lands by rehabilitation of waste woodlands and by encouraging village forestry there are however limits to what can be done in these directions every country has to strike a balance between the competitive claims of agriculture animal husbandry and forestry for use of the land for productive purposes and this balance must in the last resort be based on considerations of what is practically possible in a given set of conditions rather than on what may be theoretically desirable in the older countries it may happen that the area under forest plus the area available for afforestation is less than what is considered the desirable minimum now stop